Hello and welcome, this is Avia Learn. In this video we will see the controls and indications of the auto flight system in Airbus A320 family. I hope you will enjoy the video. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share the video. Let's start. In this video we will see the functions of the controls and indications of the auto flight system in Airbus A320 family. We will talk about the flight control unit, FCU, the electronic flight instrument system, FS control panel, the multi-purpose control and display unit, MCDU, and the thrust levers. The flight control unit, FCU. The speed mock push button switch. This is a push button switch used for toggling between speed and mock number indications. The speed mock selector knob. This selector knob has three functions. First, to change the crew selected speed when turned. Second, to activate the crew selected speed when pulled. Third, to return the managed speed when pushed. The speed mock indications. Display of the speed or mock selected by the crew. The heading track indications. Displays the heading or track selected by the crew. The heading track selector knob. This selector knob has three functions. First, to change the crew selected heading or track when turned. Second, to activate the crew selected heading or track when pulled. Third, to return to the managed lateral flight plan when pushed. The heading vertical speed and track flight path angle push button switch. Push to, first, display or hide the flight path vector on the primary flight display. Second, toggle between flight director crossbars reference to aircraft attitude symbol and flight path director reference to the flight path vector. Third, Toggle between heading vertical speed reference targets and track flight path angle reference in the heading track and vertical speed flight path angle windows. The altitude indications. The altitude window always shows the altitude set by the crew. The altitude selector knob. This selector knob has three functions. First, to change the crew selected altitude when turned. Second, to disregard the vertical profile when pulled. Third, to return to the vertical profile when pushed. The outer ring enables to select altitude increments either of 100 or 1000 feet per click. The metric altitude push button switch. This push button is used for the display of the selected and actual altitudes in meters on the primary flight displays. The vertical speed and flight path angle indications displays the vertical speed or the flight path angle. The first example shows the selected vertical speed. The second example shows the selected flight path angle. The third example shows the managed vertical mode. The vertical speed and flight path angle selector knob. Here again, the vertical speed and flight path angle selector knob has three functions. First, turned to change the vertical speed or flight path angle. Second, pushed, an immediate level off is ordered. Third, pulled to select a vertical speed or a flight path angle. The localizer push button switch. The localizer push button is used for intercepting and tracking the localizer independently of the glide. The expedite push button switch. The expedite push button allows you to clear a specified altitude or to match a constraint in climb. The target speed mock will be green dot in descent 8340. When selected, green lights are displayed on the push button. The approach push button switch. The approach push button enables the intercepting and tracking of an instrument landing system. It also allows a non-precision approach to be followed in managed navigation. The autopilot push button switch. This push button engages or disengages autopilot functions. Comes on green when the autopilot is engaged. The auto thrust push button switch. This push button arms, activates or disconnects the auto thrust. Comes on green if the auto thrust is armed or active. EFIS. The electronic flight instrument system. The flight director push button switch. This push button used for switching the flight director on or off. The optional display push button switches. These push buttons are used for the display of the related information on the navigation display. MCDU. The multi-purpose control and display unit. The MCDU display. The screen is used for the display of various pages accessible through the function keys. It comprises a little line where the name of the page is shown. Six pairs of label data lines. A scratchpad line used to enter data in the flight management and guidance computers or to display messages from the FMGCs. The line select keys. Six keys called line select keys, abbreviated LSK, are located on both sides of the screen. The enunciators. 
FM1 lighted on means that flight management and guidance computer number 1 FMGC1 has failed. FM2 lighted on means that flight management and guidance computer number 2 FMGC2 has failed. IND lighted on means that the FMGCs are operating in the independent mode. RDY lighted on means that the MCDU has finished its power-up test after its brightness knob was turned to on. The brightness knob. The brightness knob is used for increasing or decreasing the brightness. This knob is also used for switching the MCDU off. The function keys. MCDU menu key accesses the MCDU menu. The active system is indicated in green. All other information is white. Init A allows the flight plan to be initialized and the inertial reference system to be aligned. Init B allows the flight crew to initialize the zero fuel weight and the zero fuel weight center of gravity and to do the fuel planning before engines are started. Fuel Pred shows the fuel prediction for the flight and is also used for entering fuel data once the engines are started. Flight Plan Page A displays the time, speed and altitude predictions at each waypoint of the active flight plan. Flight plan page B shows the wind forecast and estimated fuel on board for each waypoint of the flight plan. Both last pages also display the distance, bearing and track between these waypoints. Dirt a page allows the modification of the flight plan by creating a direct leg from the current aircraft position to the selected waypoint. Data calls a group of monitor pages such as position monitor, inertial reference system and global positioning system monitor. It also calls a set of reference pages allowing the interrogation of the navigation database. Perf pages allow the crew to optimize the speed mock targets for each phase of flight. Prog pages enable the crew to monitor the progress of the flight, to cross-check update the flight management position, to alter the crew's flight level of the aircraft. RadNav displays the radio navigational aids currently auto-tuned by the system. It also allows the pilot to select other navigational aids. SEC flight plan allows the creation, initialization and modification of a secondary flight plan. Airport allows the crew on flight plan page A to switch between destination airport, alternate airport and origin airport. Left enunciator. Fail, lighted on, means that the MCDU has failed. FM comes on white while the crew is using the MCDU to display peripherals. This light tells the pilot that the flight management has an important message to deliver. Right enunciator. MCDU menu indicates that the pilot should call up a peripheral link to the MCDU, such as aircraft communications addressing and reporting system or centralized fault display system. Alphanumerical keyboard. These keys are used for writing data in the flight management and guidance computers via the scratchpad. Additional function keys. CLR allows data in the scratchpad, messages or inserted data, or within certain displayed pages, to be cleared. Overfly allows a selected waypoint to be overflown. Thrust levers. Thrust levers. Instinctive disconnect push button switch. A way to turn the auto thrust off is to press either one of the two auto thrust instinctive disconnect push buttons located on the thrust levers. Auto thrust operating range. The auto thrust can only work when the thrust levers are set forward of the idle deepened up to climb with both engines operative and up to max continuous thrust in case of single engine operation. We finished our session for today. I hope that you did enjoy the video. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. It was Avia Learn. See you soon.